like to welcome everybody to our call. We're going to get started right now with news you can use. First thing up today we're going to talk about is stagflation part four. Um, the Fed, as uh, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, has said we're, we're headed towards stagflation territory. Just to give everybody a quick background on what that is, uh, stagflation occurs when inflation is up and unemployment is up, but the economy is down. We have all three of those things happening right now. The economy in the United States shrunk just shy of 2% for the first four months of this year. Uh, unemployment is currently hovering just shy of 4%, which is actually pretty low compared to the last 50 years. But inflation is being stubborn and is not coming down in spite of the Fed's best efforts to hammer it down vis-a-vis -vis increases in the prime rate. Uh, currently around 8% as we sit here on the 9th of May, 9th of June, I'm sorry, uh, 2022. Um, the misery index is really the key indicator, in my opinion, uh, of what, when we're in stagflation territory. The misery index is simply the inflation rate combined with the unemployment rate. When those get above 12 to, let's say 12 to 15 percent, you're at the beginning stages of stagflation. When they're 14, 15, 16 percent combined, um, you got a real problem. It peaked in 1980 with almost 21 percent. In other words, the inflation rate and the unemployment rate combined were about 21 percent. Well, currently we're at four plus about eight, we're, we're around 12 percent, something like that, but it continues to go up. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll let you know we're not in stagflation territory yet, but we're close. The misery index is, in my opinion, the key indicator. So watch those two numbers and that'll tell you if we're really there. Uh, on to the housing market per se, there's a couple of things um, based on some analysis and looking at some of the Moody statistics, uh, Moody analytics statistics, and their uh, analyst, their chief economist, Mark Zandi, is probably one of the smartest guys in the room at any point in time. Um, he is saying that there is not going to be a market, a housing crash. There is, we all agree there's a slowdown going on. Prices are flattening or going backwards. But here's some of the factors that he uses to justify the fact that there will be no crash. And I can, I tend to concur when you look at the detail, you dive into the numbers, I think these things are right. Uh, number one, this is nowhere close to what we had in 2008 during the Great Recession. Uh, we don't have a, uh, a glut of housing like we did. In fact, occupancy today is close to an all-time high. In other words, just about every house that's available is either is occupied vis-a-vis -a, -vis a renter or an owner uh, is not sitting vacant. So we're getting more and more, but I don't think we're going to reach the territory we did in 2008 where the builders had been building and then we had this huge uh, issue of Basically, it was all these loans that were put out there by the banks, the large banks, the investment banks, uh, these what they call ninja loans, no income, no job. You could fog a mirror, get a loan, a lot of fraud, a lot of fake stuff going on. We don't have any of that now because for the last 10 years or so, the lending industry has been pristine. Uh, these folks have encouraged and accepted no less than typically 20% down, uh, real legitimate good credit scores, uh, so significant income and jobs and that kind of thing. And people who in 2008 or seven uh, may have gotten a loan for a house that shouldn't have, would never be able to even apply today. So we don't have that issue uh, as well. Underwriting's been pristine. There's not a glut of houses. I think those two factors uh, is, and what he says is those two factors are what, what's going to keep us from having a complete bottom fallout crash. I, I think we're going to continue to drop. Um, and that's evidenced by another piece of news that came out today, which is mortgage applications are at a 22-year low, uh, all-time low for the last 22 years. There's uh, last month, uh, lowest amount of applications for the last 22 years. Uh, the, the markets specifically that are going to be affected and that are being affected right now uh, include first-time home buyer markets, move-up markets, and luxury markets. Let me break that down a little bit and explain it a little bit more. Um, the first time home buyer markets are being affected by the prices uh, that have increased over the last year or two and the fact now that we have higher interest rates. 
uh, first time home buyers in a lot of cases can no longer afford the, the payment on a first time home. Today, with double the number of homes available for sale, uh, there's only half the number of loans available for first time home buyers. So, you know, you've, you've got both sides falling down, the number of homes and the prices are dropping, but also the ability to get a mortgage because of the fact that mortgage rates have gone from two and a half percent to five and a half percent. People can't afford that at the first time home buyer level. Creative finance, things like that, the things that we do, transactional engineering help, uh, but you know, we're a small cog in the wheel. We're a small piece of that overall thing. Uh, demand is still there. Demand continues to go up. What's this going to do? First time home buyers that can't buy because they can't get a loan because they can't afford a loan will still rent. They want to get out of an apartment to get into a rental home. So rental homes, we're seeing rents continue to go up and hold. And that has been unusual. Typically when mortgage rates go up, rental rates go down. We're not seeing that this time around. Number two, the move up home buyers, the people who bought their first time home the last three, four years, now want to move up to the next little bit nicer house, maybe a little bit better area, that kind of thing. They can't do that um, because they, you know, why trade a two and a half, three percent mortgage for a five and a half or six percent mortgage and a higher payment? Um, and so they can't afford to move up. So the move up homes are also stalling out at a faster level than uh, the ability to absorb that. And, and this, I see this is a bigger problem than first time home buyer. Because there's always new people coming into that first time home buyer market, right? But the and then they move up from there to the to the next level up, the first time move up buyer. Um, and, and those people aren't moving up, and there's still more people coming into the first time home buyer, albeit more of them can't afford a mortgage. So I, I see the demand at the first time home buyer level will continue to increase. The demand at the move up level will eventually decrease because. People who normally move up just can't it's, with mortgage rates as high. It's just, it's going to be almost impossible. And then finally, kind of a bright spot of surprise. And I think this is a temporary thing, but some of the higher end luxury homes are holding in there in price. And this is, this is down to the old economics lessons of, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Unfortunately, that's just how this thing works out there. And, you know, people who have money tend to make more money and get more money and people don't have money tend to make less money and have less of it stick in their fingers. And we're seeing that in the housing market. So the higher end luxury market seems to be holding in there pretty good. Um, and people are using this as an opportunity to buy. And a lot of it is for tax reasons and things like that. But uh, right now, um, you know, still seems to be a decent time to be in the luxury market. Now, I would not go long on a luxury prop project um, I would not do a lease option on a luxury thing. You've got to get in for cash cheap and you've got to fix it and then flip it. But that high end of the market right now, as we sit here in June of 2022, seems to be holding its own. I suspect by this fall that'll, that will drop off um, and the demand will continue at the first time home buyer level and then the move up home buyer level. Uh, they're going to be stuck, however, because of the fact that interest rates are high. If we get into stagflation, all bets are off, and I think a lot of stuff will start dropping. And we'll see what, what happens, but a lot of the inflationary pressures that we see and the fact that it did not go down last month at all, in spite of the Fed's uh, sincere interest to raise interest rates at a faster clip, uh, that's not happened. And But I think that eventually by the fall, uh, this time next year for sure, I think inflation will be abated. Worst case scenario, we end up Jimmy Carter days again, 1980, uh, with a combined misery index of 21%. Inflation through the roof, unemployment through the roof, economy taking a nosedive. Nose dive. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to have a modified version, low-level stagflation, um, just chugging along, but still moving forward, not falling off the cliff. It's certainly not going up at this point. So no good news, but then again, no severe bad news either. So, uh, and, and that's okay, because when we have a parity market, even a number of buyers and sellers, that's good for us. Um, of course, we can buy better if there are more sellers running to the marketplace. Um, and we're seeing that right now. So for, at least for the next, I'd say six months to a year, uh, we should be having a heyday to buy properties because sellers still come across the natural reasons that sellers need to sell. 
death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, family issues, having to move, job things, all these types of issues uh, still happen on a daily basis. People die, people get divorced, people go bankrupt. And uh, dead people, as we always say, don't need houses. So those houses come on the market and that gives us more opportunity. Um, anyway, that's kind of my quick read on where we're at with the markets today, first part of June, 2022. That's it for news you can use today.